Stormwater control measures, or SCMs, reduce flooding and the amount of pollutants in water that reaches our streams. They capture sediment, car oil, excess lawn chemicals, and other pollutants that would otherwise be washed into creeks and streams. SCMs can help reduce downstream flooding by holding back, slowing down, or infiltrating water before draining to ditches and pipes that route to streams. Stormwater control measures have been required to be installed on development sites for several decades throughout Davidson County. Our regulations address how developers must adjust a building site to accommodate the rainwater that will not be able to soak into the ground when buildings and parking lots are built. You can see stormwater control measures in subdivisions, apartment complexes, churches, and commercial sites. While most SCMs are empty during dry weather, it is important to be aware of the safety hazards. They can quickly fill with water during and after rainstorms, and SCMs can have underground pipes that should only be entered by OSHA-trained personnel. There are over 6,000 SCMs within the county, with more being installed every day. The current property owner is legally responsible for inspecting and maintaining the stormwater control measures on their property. Proper maintenance of SCMs not only prevents pollution from reaching neighborhood creeks and streams, it is also a legal requirement. Property owners of sites that were developed after 2007 are required to file an annual SCM maintenance report with Metro Water Services. All property owners are responsible for inspecting and maintaining SCMs on their property. A maintenance and inspection document for your SCM is included with your property deed. These documents are available through the Metro Nashville Register of Deeds. While sites developed before 2008 are not required to submit annual inspection reports, Metro does encourage and will accept reports from these properties. Owner submitted annual inspection reports shall include all of the SCMs listed for the property under the grading permit number that it was developed under. Reports should be submitted as soon as possible after the last inspection for the year, but no later by July 1st of the following year. For questions on annual reporting requirements, email mws.scm at nashville.gov. Metro Water Service inspects stormwater control measures to ensure they are properly maintained by the property owner and functioning properly. Annual SCM maintenance by the property owner will avoid unnecessary expenses. Dry detention ponds temporarily store and slowly release stormwater runoff and prevent downstream flooding. Sediment, soil, nutrients, heavy metals, and other pollutants settle out in the pond. During dry weather, these ponds remain dry. The key parts of a dry detention pond are inlet structures or ditches, the pond basin, the outlet structures, the discharge channel or pipe. A well-maintained dry pond has a clog-free outlet structure, drains properly after rain, within 72 hours after last rain event, and is covered in grass that is mowed routinely. Regular inspection or maintenance includes mowing. Mow the dry pond at least twice a year. Clear the pond of any brushes or trees, leaving only grass. Check the outlet for clogs after every rain. Remove any trash or other debris. Regularly check the pond for trash and remove when necessary. Dry ponds should drain within 72 hours after it rains. If the pond is still wet after 72 hours, grade work to the pond may be necessary. Consult with a professional familiar with SCM maintenance for proper repairs. Sediment and debris that builds up around structures should be removed as needed. 
Repair any eroded areas in or around the sides of the pond. Generally, trees or woody vegetation should not be within the basin of the pond or near structures. If the pond has gone years without proper maintenance and mature trees are present, some of the large trees may remain as long as they are not interfering with the pond drainage. All trees within basin of the pond that are under six inches in diameter should be removed. All trees, regardless of the size that are within 20 feet of the structure should be removed. A wet retention pond can consist of a combination of a permanent deep water pool and a shallow marsh. Because wet ponds are designed to retain water, the design specifications include mosquito control measures. These ponds allow pollutants to settle out of the water, encourage natural microbial activity that cleans the water, and reduces the overall amount of rain runoff. Sediment, trash, Nutrients, metals, and pollutants settle to the bottom of a retention pond. Rain runoff will remain in a wet retention pond for days to weeks while the pollutants settle out. Rain from small storms is retained in the pond. Larger rain amounts may flow out of the pond through the overflow structure. The parts of a wet retention pond are sediment forebay, an inlet structure where the water flows into the pond, the pond itself and possibly a marsh area, the outlet overflow structure that may have an adjustable valve. Regular maintenance includes, remove trash from the pond, the banks, trees on the bank may be fine as long as not in pond or near structures, and check dams. After heavy rains, check the inlet and outlet for clogs and remove sediment and trash. During an annual inspection, measure sediment levels within the sediment forebay and remove if needed. If sediment levels get too high in the sediment forebay, sediment will start collecting in the wet pond. If too much sediment accumulates in the pond, the pond will need to be dredged. Remove small trees that are growing close to the structures or on the check dams. Check for erosion around the wet pond and near the structures and address if needed. Look for exposed areas of pond liners along the edges of the water that may need to be covered back with soil. A bioretention basin is a depression filled with native plants and special soil mix. The plants contribute to removing pollutants as they wick moisture from the soil. It collects and retains stormwater runoff from pavement and other impervious areas. Once in the basin, stormwater runoff soaks into the special soil mix. Carefully chosen plants, usually native plants, take up the water. During the average rain, excess water either soaks into the soil or drains out through under drains to the storm water system. In the case of a large storm, water will safely flow out of the basin through the overflow structure. Bioretention types vary from large basins, tree and planter boxes and sidewalks, to smaller rain gardens, and specially designed streetscapes. Key parts of a bioretention include the basin, native plants, wood or stone mulch layer, underlying sand or soil mix, under drain system, and the overflow spillway. Regular maintenance should occur frequently throughout the year to include Replace any dead plants with the same type of plant Remove weeds manually. Do not use herbicide Visit the bioretention site within 24 or 48 hours of a rainstorm and see if there is ponding or if water is going around, bypassing the basin.
If there is an outlet, check for clogs after a heavy rain and check for mulch buildup around outlet. Remove trash. Do not mow inside the basin with a large commercial mower. Replace mulch or stone if needed. Remove old layer and replace with new materials. Mulch should be at least four inches below the opening to the overflow spillway. Check for erosion and repair as needed. Permeable pavement or pavers allow rain runoff to drain through the pavement into the soil below. Stormwater soaks through the permeable top layer into the soil below. Oils, sediment, soil, and other parking lot pollutants are filtered out of the stormwater. Most permeable pavement installations have an underdrain that leads to the stormwater drainage system. The key parts of permeable pavement or pavers are top layer of pavement, permeable voids between the pavers, and underdrain system. Regular maintenance is critical in preventing expensive deep cleans or repairs. Routine maintenance should include frequently blowing off or sweeping off loose grit and debris that could clog the pavement pores, or cleaning oil drips and spills immediately with absorbent material. Keep the permeable pavement in working condition. Do not power wash. This could force dirt and debris between the pavers and clog the pores in permeable pavement. Do not store items that could leak contents such as oils and other materials that could clog the pavement or paver voids on the pavers. Do not place structures over the permeable areas that will reduce infiltration area of the parking areas. Do not place mulch, soil, or sand on the permeable areas. During inspections, visit the site when it rains and look for ponding. Manually remove grass or other weeds growing between the pavers. Do not use herbicide. Look for and remove excessive sediment buildup between pavers. Repair damaged or dislodged pavers. Consult a professional maintenance company if water is ponding and does not drain. Grassy swales slow down the flow of stormwater runoff, allowing pollutants to filter out and some stormwater to infiltrate into the ground. Grassy swales have flat bottoms and lots of grass that helps rain runoff spread out and slow down. Sediment, soil, and other pollutants are filtered out as the water soaks into the ground. Grassy swales have taller grass and need to be mowed less often than normal turf areas. The key parts of a grass channel or filtration strip are the established grass, outlet or inlet, and check dams, if present. Regular maintenance includes Maintain the grass by mowing less frequently than turf. Grass can be kept higher than turf. Remove trash. After a heavy rain, check the outlet for clogs and trash and remove if necessary. Do not store objects or materials in the filter strip or channel. Remove sediment and debris around the check dams. Replace washout rock of check dams. During an inspection, visit the site within 24 hours of a rain event to check for proper drainage. Water may pond for short periods upstream of check dams, but should drain down quickly after the rain ends. Remove any trees or shrubs that have started to grow in the filter strip or channel. Check for erosion and repair if needed.
Water quality units are proprietary devices specific to each manufacturer located below ground. Water quality units filter pollutants out of stormwater, releasing the treated water to the drainage system. The structures have limited pollutant storage and require frequent maintenance. Do not enter a water quality unit. Structures are considered to be confined spaces and any entry into the unit must comply with OSHA's confined space permit program. Due to the significant danger presented by confined spaces, only OSHA certified personnel should work in a water quality unit. For safety reasons, uncertified personnel should avoid placing any body part, such as a hand or foot, into any part of a confined space. Water enters the unit through storm drains. Sediment, soil, trash, and oil are trapped within the unit using the specific manufacturer's design. Every system is unique to the manufacturer, and depending on how much sediment and trash drain to the unit, they may need to be cleaned several times a year. Once a unit has reached its capacity of trapped pollutants, all future polluted stormwater will bypass around the unit. Determine the type of water quality unit and visit the manufacturer's website to determine specific inspection and maintenance guidance. Hire a qualified company with the proper equipment to conduct inspection and maintenance of water quality units.